Recording. I need a GoPro myself. Wendy's gonna GoPro you right now. No, 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 no. Oh. Yeah. Do that. Okay, so I spared everybody the drama that was me miscalculating jars. I came up three short for fillets. That's these three guys right here. And of course, I was out of habaneros. Oh. Out of Anaheim's, uh, but luckily Colleen had lots of jalapenos in the refrigerator and this time I've added some onion and of course the garlic. So these fish are now packed in the jars with jalapeno, onion, and garlic. I have no idea. And the salt. And now I'm moving on to bellies. So Packing these dudes into the jars is a new thing for me. I don't know if they're supposed to go a certain direction or what, but what I have figured out is that by leaving the pectoral fins on, it makes them a real pain to fit in the jar. So those are going away. Nobody wants to eat a fish fin anyway. It's just me being lazy when I cut these originally. Come on, buddy. All right, there we go. And these still have the skin on them. So the skin's, it's edible if you want to eat it. If you don't want to eat it, you take it and you peel it off your jarred salmon and throw it in the garbage. And cutting these guys into what I think is... What I'm showing here is uh, jar lids coming up to temperature. They got to boil for 10 minutes or just boil. So we're undecided to either have to come to a boil or boil for 10 minutes. <laughs> and this is not my part of it. So they're going to do what they're going to do. But the lids are in the hot water. And the boys are all out here on the deck being the boys. Hi. Introductions. Marty, Quincy, that's Clinton. Clayton Stewart Gellerman. Quincy Teague Gellerman. I'm Marty. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Name and, Name and serial number, please. Name and serial number, and you won't get anything else from me, Connie. <laughs> All right, there you go. I've been told it's time to deal with the jars. I think Gwendy is bringing the lids. And I'm supposed to be the bearer of the ring. The ring bearer. Huh? Open the door for your mom. Okay, first I'm going to come through and see you real quick. You need to move that guy over? Alright. Speaker. Well, the long leg. Well, we both know it's pretty small leg. Yeah. Uh, it's previously stocked. It has yeah. that char, grayling, landlocked salmon, rainbows. But I think they only stock rainbows in it these days. Yeah. So I don't think they up and update the fishing game website every year. Oh, they do. It says last the Long Lake last stock 2020 Wild with rainbows. Oh, okay. So we could try that out. Now, when you're looking through there and you run into Long Lake, there's like three different Long Lakes. Uh, and you got to look at the map to determine which one is which. Okay. Where even is? The Long Lakes. Well, there's there's one in the valley outside of Palmer. Then there's another one up the highway headed towards uh, here, outside of Palmer. And it's a big uh, ice fishing lake because it's, it's right off the highway. 
and people can access it without a snow machine or a four-wheeler. Mm -hmm. So that one's kind of loaded up with pike and lake trout, I think. Ooh. That's interesting. Is can be. Is there way you could fish there in the summer? Yeah. Yeah, you can fish from the shore, or you can take kayaks or canoes or whatever you want out there. I don't know if you can have power boats on it or not. You'd have to look. All right, looking at Jewel Lake. It's pretty much got the same stuff, minus granite, <laughs> so char. Actually, it's only got... Before, it's had char, rumah, salmon, rainbows, pretty much it. Okay. So it's not so special. You're just going to reach in there with your fingers? All right. Last, most recently stocked with just rainbows, evidently. Make sure there's no flies in those. Areas. We don't want to jar any flies. Nope, not even if we want to Here we go. Here's a rock and roll. Yep, go ahead. Burning baby. Hello? Oh, nope. yeah. Are so I only got. You don't have to try to hurry. Just get the lids on. I'm gonna get the lids all set on there, and then I'll come back and give them all a couple of turns afterwards. Have the boys come. Hey, Quinn. You come set the lids on here, and I'll give them. Don't even twist them on. Just set them on. See what I'm doing? Got that? Do that. Okay, so I learned the jars cannot float in the water. If you tried to put three inches in there, I might have gone a little more. The jars should sit in there and not float. Okay, that's it. Covered. That's it? That's all we got? Okay, so that jar's about half full. These particular canners, I don't know which model they are. They are the... Some kind of pressure cooker thing. Anyway, they'll hold two stacks of quart jars. Or quartz, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, now we're gonna light the fire. So it's a matter of just grabbing these little bad boys and sticking them on the carpet. With my big gumby mitt. Come on, Gumby Mitt, don't fail me now. And as you can see, it's still boiling inside. And there we have it, the jars are all laid out on the Carpet waiting to cool. It's still boiling. Waiting for the lids to pop down. Okay, we're back in Anchorage. We've got all of our jarred salmon that is done. It's in the jars. Looks nice. You guys saw me work on some of this when we were in Kenai and Gundy and Colleen pressure pressure jarring it so now the next step is ship it off to friends and family so what we use is just a standard flat rate medium shipping box I've got a couple layers of paper towel in the bottom just to add some extra cushioning each one of these jars is in a Ziploc sandwich baggie and you'll see why that's important here in a minute. And what I have here is some kind of spray foam. Doesn't really matter what kind you buy.
when I just start hosing it down around the bottoms of the jars, in between the jars. And in between the jars and the sides of the box. Okay. Doesn't have to be super precise here. The main thing we're trying to prevent is from the jars actually clunking together in the box. And you could probably do this by wrapping everybody up in bubble wrap or newspaper, or packing peanuts, or whatever you want. But I have found that the spray foam method is pretty speedy, works pretty good. And it's more fun than having packing peanuts blowing all over your garage. Back in the garage. This is several hours later. The foam is all now cured. It's evening time. Ooh, maybe not all the foam is cured, but it's pretty darn close. So I'm going to trim these guys up. I got to go rack out. I need to work tomorrow. So we got some foam that expanded over. Not a big deal. Give these guys a little trim with your. Happy pocket knife, whatever you got. We're not looking for super precision here, right? You just need to get the box closed. And you'll see, I just reviewed that last video and realized I did not show the most important thing. So here the box is done, it's gonna arrive friends and family like this and all they have to do reach in grab the jar here's the jarred salmon here is the foamed in core just protected them so that's how they come out of there all right now that's really it here is what that smoked fish looks like once it's been Vacuum bagged and put in the freezer, or refrigerator rather, for these. See all the oil kind of oozed out of there? That'll prevent it from freezer burning. There you have it.